Good morning, it's Deljit Singh. Um, and it's early in the morning, it's six o'clock um, here in the city centre. In 2021, we put together a couple of videos, a couple of films about Peterborough. Well, thank you to the tens of thousands of you who watched those. Really humbled by that. And also the comments from all around the world from people who've watched them. Some of you actually lived in Peterborough. Some of you actually learned about Peterborough. But what you said was really, really encouraging. In fact, so much so, we're back doing a magical history tour number three. And that's Peterborough City Centre. I'm up by Borges Boulevard here. This car park was actually the site of a pub, the Eight Bells. Hang on, you're saying, whoa, whoa, stop, Del. Eight bells, surely you mean six bells. You already dropped a clangor and you just started. No, this was originally the Eight Bells. So back in 1856, a pub was established here called the Eight Bells Inn. As it happens, 20 years later, the owner of that there pub took the name up to another VIP pub on Lincoln Road. And therefore it became the Six Bells Inn. It re remained the Six Bells Inn after that for over 100 plus years. In fact, I used to frequent the place as the Six Bells in the 1970s, really primarily to get away from uncles and others that might recognise me in pubs down Cromwell Road. So at a pool table, it was a great place to kind of hang around and play. It was really close to the city centre and it was pretty good. It actually operated as Six Bells for a good number of years, up until about 1993 when it became the Rat and Carrot. Yeah, I, I'm trying to work out what the connection was there as well. But it became a bit of a biker's pub, had bands, music in there. And that continued for a little while, up until the announcement of the North Westgate development, at which point the place was pretty much closed down around sort of um, a, a little bit later. In fact, it actually reverted back to the Six Bells, if I'm not mistaken, around 2000. And about 2002, it finally was boarded up, closed, and demolished and turned into this fabulous bastion of automotive parking, a car park. So here we are outside the Brewery Tap. Now this is thankfully is a pub that's still here. Opened in 1998 by Paul Hook and the Oakamales team. On-site brewery, great food, plus entertainment night spot, and it's still going strong. But I'm interested in the building before it became the Brewery Tap. Because before it became the Brewery Tap, and my memories of this building back in the 1970s was as Peterborough Labour Exchange. Some of you are thinking, what's a labour exchange? Well, actually, it was kind of like the forerunner of job centres. It's where people would come to get employment. There's not a really a massive amount that tells you it used to be a labour exchange, but there are a couple of telltale signs. Just behind me, above that door, is a sign saying employers. So this is where employers would actually enter the building looking to hire a workforce. And a little bit further along, on the other side, is another door which has the word juveniles over the top of it. So these were school leavers, people looking for their first job, and they would queue at that door there. And around the other side, obviously, the sign's gone now above the door, but there was probably the sign for regular folks that were slightly older workforce. So that's what this place was, a job centre. It is actually a, a, an amazing building, a lot of history behind it. Um, and as I say, it's been spared from that development of... North Westgate and it will carry on as a brewery tap but for me it will always be the Labour Exchange. Okay so here I'm on Westgate. I have memories of this place dating back to the 1970s so around 1978 um, and the main reason for that was you can tell from my hairstyle I wasn't really one of the regular congregation here but what I did do was come to the youth club that used to be around the back here. So back in those days when we had youth clubs, many were church affiliated, not that you actually had to be a member of the church or of that religion even, but they just catered for the youth of the day. And the club around the corner was actually pilots. So I used to remember coming there with your 5p, which brought you a cup of warm orange squash and an arrowroot biscuit. Um, but you got a chance to play ping pong and table football and do all those things, just get you off the street. So it was pretty good. So that was kind of around the corner there. Strangely enough, many years later, um, when I got engaged, my dad hired the hall, and that was a kind of cheap engagement party. But it was so, so I have some memories of this place. It actually has had a couple of fires here over the years as well. Um, so, but it's been restored. It's now still operating as a church. It's now found a new lease of life. Obviously, as you can see, it's it, populations from overseas. So you've got Portuguese and other uh, communities. It still operates as a church and it's very full. It's a Sunday so we're going to have to film quickly and get out before the congregation arrive. Okay so behind me is Queensgate bus station or what's being left of it. This whole thing is being kind of redeveloped at the moment. In fact it's 40 years this year since Queensgate 
opened in Peterborough. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later on. But in the meantime, there used to be pre-Queensgate shops along here. Quite a few shops, very small, quaint shops. There was the news agents. But the one that stuck out for me in my head is Ron's, a gent's hairdresser. Again, it's not a place I would frequent with a hairstyle like mine, but gents did to get their short back and sides and something for the weekend. You've got to be of a certain age to understand that last statement. But, uh, so, but Ron's is quite interesting because when Queensgate arrived, Ron's actually moved to New Road uh, as a hairdresser. But he also found a sideline in repairing razors and shavers. The electric shaver was a big thing back then. So, and Ron then became Ron Rudkins. And I think that might still be up on St Paul's Road. Shaver repairs, electrical repairs and so on. So a number of shops that used to be here are no more gave way to Queensgate, gave way to the bus station, um, but some really amazing memories. Okay, so talking about history, this place is really historic. Up on Westgate here, this building is now the Wortley Arms, but it was established back in 1744 by Edward Wortley, who was MP for the city, and it became a workhouse. Now, workhouse was somewhere where basically people, the poor, the needy, could actually get work, but they had to work for their money, and workhouse had quite a bad reputation, um, not being kind of a lot of intolerable cruelty going on there. So there were two workhouses, this one here, plus one on Cumbergate, and with the opening of a bigger, probably even worse, uh, workhouse up on Thorpe Road, in 1837, this actually became an almshouse. An almshouse was somewhere where the poor and needy who were elderly, disabled, infirm, could actually find some kind of food, uh, a place to shelter, etc. So that's what this place was. It's got a lot of history. Now, the interesting story behind it, possible bit of urban folklore and legend is that one, Charles Dickens, uh, used to frequent the city. and used to come here time to time. And in the 1830s, stopped by here uh, and drew inspiration for Oliver Twist. So did he see somebody asking for more and getting beaten and not getting their gruel? Who knows? But it was quite interesting to know. I'm sure there were workhouses uh, nearer to him in London, but maybe he saw something here, it inspired him, maybe modelled some stuff, and some characters. It'd be nice to think that Peter would play a part in that Dickens legacy here. But this place laid empty for quite a number of years, and then with the development at Queensgate, the building, as a listed building, was put back to good use and has been operating as the Wortley Arms pub. And thankfully, because it's a listed building, even with the North Westgate development, it will continue to be a part of our history in the city. Okay, so behind me here on Westgate, um, it's the Banyan tree now, it used to be Bar Block, but let's go back, way back to the 1900s, the Royal Hotel, one of Peterborough's premier hotels, really. That's what this place was. If you see some old photos, you might even see that there was an old concrete block here, which is where the same stairs leading up to it, but it's very different now. It got Grade 2 listed status building in 1952, so it escaped the bulldozers of Queensgate. Just the other side of the Royal Hotel, sadly, it did fall to the bulldozers of Queensgate, was Queen Street. And Queen Street was a street that led off, over to Perkins Engines, who were basically on site there, a number of other shops there. And as we celebrate 40 years of Queensgate, buried underneath Queensgate, probably roughly where that John Lewis's employee's entrance was, where's Queen Street would have been, um, is no more. So underneath there is a lot of history of what used to be Queen Street, um, now underneath Queen's Gate. It's amazing what you learn walking around here. Absolutely no idea. I've walked past this place hundreds of times over the years. I actually did not see that uh, up on the wall there. The fact, the little plaque there about Deacon School, the fact Deacon School established in 1722, stood on a site nearby from here from 1883 through to 1960. So yeah, Deacon's you know, I always knew Deacons being up sort of Park Road, up that part of the world, but obviously Deacons originally was not far from here. But it's amazing, it's just one of those things about we are surrounded by such history. We've just got to keep looking up occasionally and taking note. Okay, so th most people know Millfield, they know New England, but this top end of Lincoln Road and Westgate is Burrowberry. So I know Burrowberry from back in the 1970s, particularly this top corner here just behind me, uh, Johnson's Corner because effectively there were shops there there was a news agents there it was a small you heard the Leaning Tower of Pisa it was actually the Leaning News Agents of Peterborough um, it was this little rickety shop that was there 
and it wasn't just the walls that were leaning because we walked inside and it was like literally walking uphill because the floors were uneven too but it was quite a beautiful little shop very small and it had a very distinct smell about it of newsprint it was like if you just somebody just gave you fresh newspapers you got that waft of papers it was a stationer's a booksellers a news agents um, and tobacconist too and I, I have a personal story so back in the 1970s my father was opening a business and he was after a, this publication called trader and it listed all the wholesalers around the uk and i tried everywhere and peter would get a copy of this magazine couldn't find it w h smith said oh yeah sign up for six months and we'll get one for you i remember stopping in there and the gentleman i said i don't suppose you heard a trader and he dived under the counter emerged a few minutes later with this magazine and he said you can have this because it's a couple of months old um actually i didn't tell my dad this but i used the money to buy a copy of the beano the dandies and sweets and i told him i paid for the magazine so sorry dad um but it was amazing this is a lad in cave of publications and magazines and that was johnson's corner okay so here we are on where johnson's corner would have been where that news agents was i said unfortunately it's a car park now there's not a lot left of it it was still a listed building back in 1973 unfortunately because of the condition of the building because it was really quite rickety and very dangerous even the listed status didn't save it and it was demolished and sadly it doesn't exist anymore but behind me there was also a quite an amazing uh, building uh, a business it was Burberry Motors and Burberry Motors was the first Volkswagen dealership I had some amazing memories of that because around the 1970s one of the big kind of cars that was still really really popular I think it was possibly because there were a number of movies came out that around about this racing VW Beetle called Herbie and Herbie rides and Herbie rides again and Herbie goes to Monte Carlo and so you had these up on ramps you'd have a, a VW Beetle with number 53 on it and I could still visualize in my head on Burberry Motors forecourt a Beetle looking like Herbie there but my favorite story of Burberry Motors was actually a VW camper van I'd never seen a VW camper van in real I'd seen them on films and so on generally with surfboards and stuff sticking out of them but I remember a school friend of mine sadly not with us anymore and I saw this VW camper van their forecourt and had to go and have a quick look inside and the gentleman said we could come and have a look at it and it lovely when he opened it up and it had you know the seats that turned into beds it had a little sink in there um, and it had the roof that kind of extended up so you could stand up inside it and it was like you know it's like a party bus and that was amazing so that was Burberry Motors okay so up on um, Lincoln Road here um, as a child I was actually a bit of a sickly child and these are my sickly adult but I was a sickly child so I spent a lot of time in this building behind me which was a doctor's surgery um, and it was Dr. Kasky and Dr. Steen in fact Dr. Steen was the lovely gentleman that brought me into this world and delivered me and it was a, a medical practice which then moved from here to North Street um, just opposite at which point and sadly Dr. Steen passed away and it was Dr. John Gordon and Dr. Kasky Senior I should say who took on that practice um, they then later moved to the Park Medical Centre which is still there today okay the shops here on Lincoln Road have really changed and I mean really changed so now yep you've got a snack bar you've got internet cafe something that obviously in the 70s across the way there was P.S. Willis and Son P.S. Willis were actually electrical shops so before you had all these big B&Q's and places the DIY stores you bought all the electrical stuff your bulbs wires plugs lamps from P.S. Willis next door to them you had the carpet shop and you actually had the uh, in fact actually there's a music shop there if I remember there's a music shop and a carpet shop so there was the landscape was very different for me one of my favorites just behind me up the road here probably that sign is the burger place was the Kona bar cafe it was actually a cafe but it was also a milk bar I don't know milk bar but yeah it was one of these places you'd go to it was the first place I think I got a proper milkshake where there were these big machines big white machines that dispensed milk and they'd make you this really frothy milkshake but the reason I actually liked the place was it had a jukebox had a really good jukebox so I could go in there along with my school friends sit there and actually listen to the music they weren't that much into the music I was they actually liked the pinball machine there was a good one in there as well in fact when he got really good at it he used to tilt and he always lost it lost your money on there but look it was really really great so that's what we had we had cafes back then not burger joints this is all pre McDonald's pre those fast food joints and you had these brilliant little cafes and the Kona bar was just an example so like I say very different to what it looks like today behind me is quite a famous iconic 
watering hole. It's uh, now the ostrich. In fact, it was the ostrich inn back in the 1800s. So around 1837 is when this place originally opened as the ostrich inn. And it had some really famous patrons during the 1900s when artists would perform in Peterborough, people like Charlie Chaplin, uh, Stan Laurel of Laurel Hardy fame. They'd pop in here after the show for a quick half or a slow half, depending on what they felt like, I suppose. Um, and it stayed as a pub for a good number of years. It was probably around the 1970s, late 80s, when it closed down as a pub and it became a homebrew shop. I remember coming here to buy some brewer's yeast from a dad for his beers. He made some awful beers, I have to say. They weren't very palatable. But it stayed as a homebrew shop for a little while. But then it reopened as Bogart's. So a lot of people in the local entertainment scene will know Bogart's as a pub, live bands, ales, etc. Um, throughout the 1990s um, and it's now gone back to its original name again in 2009 of the ostrich the ostrich inn um, so again it's nice that not all the pubs around here are kind of disappearing and closing the one thing I've learned from making these films is that it's been great to recount my stories but the thing that I've loved the most is actually hearing other people's stories the feedback that I've received, that Peter Presents has received uh, by people watching these films is amazing. Um, I've learned a great deal about other people's experiences of my city. Um, I'm, so I'm delighted to share that and I'm looking forward to hearing more. And I do want people to share this stuff because there are people that are disparaging and negative about the city when they needn't be. Honestly, if you look around, there's some really good stuff you can say about the city just an experience a story i do hope you'll share some of your stories with us when you watch this because there's a wonderful history about this city i mean i've learned stuff just walking around today that i wasn't aware of because as i said if you look up as opposed to down you're always going to see something new and if you listen to people you'll always hear something that's of interest so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for asking for more of these uh, we'll oblige if you keep watching and you keep sharing and you keep telling us that you enjoy magical history tours of Peterborough. Thank you.